Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Have a cool species profile for you today. We're going to be taking a closer look at the Galaxy Rasbora, otherwise known as the Celestial Pearl Daniel. We've got a bunch of them in a tank. They are amazing looking fish that stay small. Hope you enjoy the video. So what you're looking at here is a planted 29 gallon that has hundreds, approximately 300 or so of these Galaxy Rasboras slash Celestial Pearl Daniels in this tank. This was a temporary setup. We moved some of these fish out later, but I just thought it was a striking looking tank. The Galaxy Rasbora is an amazing fish. It comes from Myanmar. It is a fish that is relatively tolerant of a wide range of water parameters. Here we're looking at a 14 gallon bow front where those blue fish with the white spots, those are the galaxy rasboras. We'll talk about the fish that they are in here with in a little bit. I think one of the main things that attracts people to the galaxy rasbora is the size. Generally, they're gonna top out at around an inch, maybe slightly larger females, a little bit larger, a little bit more rounded, but the color is fantastic, especially on the males and especially when they're showing off. By the way, if you are looking for these fish, can't find them locally, definitely check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. They are a channel sponsor, sell fantastic fish. This is a very peaceful fish. And so in terms of their temperament, this is a fish that you wanna have in a community tank and you're going to want to keep these with other fish that aren't going to grow too large. You'll Usually if they're healthy, you'll get at least somewhere two, three, four years of a, in terms of lifespan from these guys. Now, tank mates. Again, this is a small fish. It's a peaceful fish, so you want to make sure the other fish in your tank share those same characteristics. So for instance, they get along great with other rasboras. As you'll see throughout this video, we've had them combined with dwarf rasboras, the Mira rasbora, chilies, green kubatai, exclamation point rasboras. If you're looking for some of those bottom feeder scavenger type fish, the pygmy quarries, uh, standard quarry cats like panda quarries. They will get along with shrimp and snails, like your mystery snails and your nearite snails. Otocinclus would work just fine. If you've got a larger tank like this 29, there's a large bristlenose pleco in this tank. That combination worked out. Your smaller tetras, like your ember tetras and your neons and cardinals, black neons. If you're looking for a live bear, maybe something with a little bit of a different type of movement to the tank, you've got your endlers, your Florida least killifish. So there are quite a number of fish that you could keep with these. Just make sure they're on the smaller side and on the more peaceful side. And that will certainly help allow these guys to thrive. I think what you're seeing throughout this video is one of the best ways to keep them, and that is in a big group. So in a 29 gallon, I would not hesitate to put 30 or 35 at least in a 29 gallon. You can go all the way down to a five gallon in terms of the tank size. And even in a five gallon, it's not hard to imagine having a half a dozen or so in that five. Ideally, I'd like to see them in at least a 10 gallon, however. And there again, you can do a half dozen to 10, but you're really gonna see their personalities when you keep these fish together. By the way, we have lots of species profiles in the description below. If you're looking for fish, tank mates to keep with these fish, check out the description. Temperature. There's a decent range here, somewhere around 74, 75, up to 80. We keep our tanks at around 78 to 80 degrees. Wide range in pH, anywhere from low mid sixes up to around eight. Our pH is around an eight. I would say that's towards the upper end, but as you can see, they're thriving, happy, and healthy. Water hardness, anywhere from three to let's say 12 or 13 degrees on your GH and your KH. For our purposes, we are at around 10 degrees for both our general hardness and our carbonate hardness. So they do have a wide range, a, a, a very big tolerance when it comes to water parameters. Feeding these fish, it's not a hard thing to do. We feed all of our fish North Fin foods. They are a very high quality food. 
I like to give these fish the North Fin Community Flake, sometimes the Cichlid Flake. The one thing I do is I crush it up into fairly small particles just because they're tiny fish with a tiny mouth. It just allows them to eat the food a little bit easier. They will also eat the micro pellets from North Fin. We love to feed our rasboras of all kinds live baby brine. They love live baby brine. They go crazy for it. It is certainly not a requirement, but it is fun to watch them eat. Let's talk a little bit about the tank setup. You're seeing a couple different tanks here. One is this 29 gallon, the other one is the 14 gallon. They have some things in common. One of the things is they're both planted. You don't have to have live plants with your Galaxy Rasboras. You can use fake plants, plastic plants, but the plants will help them feel more secure. You see in both tanks, we have some rock and some driftwood. Again, if you've got structure in the tank that's gonna help them feel secure, the other thing that's going to keep them from hiding a lot is if you keep them in a group like you see throughout this video in both of the tanks. The substrate color and the background color will have an impact on how your fish look. Darker backgrounds, darker substrate is going to darken these fish up, allow them to show a little bit more blue and a little bit more red. If you keep them on a lighter substrate with a lighter background, that color might get washed out a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind as you're choosing how you want to aquascape your fish tank. Breeding these fish is very similar to other types of rasboras. Obviously you get a group of males and females. They are going to be egg scatterers. The eggs will land all over the tank. They will eat the eggs. So if you don't remove the adults after they spawn, the eggs will most likely go missing. And if they don't go missing and they happen to hatch, most likely your fry will go missing if you have adults in the tanks. And so a typical way to spawn rasboras is you allow them to scatter their eggs. You put a spawning mop in the tank or a lot of java moss. You pull that out after about a day. You put that in a 10 gallon tank or so and you allow the eggs to hatch. Now, this is not gonna be easy to raise the fry because they are so tiny. And so these fish are gonna need things like green water, infusoria, paramecium at first, very tiny microscopic organisms to feed the fry. Eventually, after a few weeks, they will get to a size where they can eat live baby brine. And then from there, you can feed them like you would feed the adults. So it's just a little bit of a challenge to get these guys to, not so much of a challenge to get them to breed, it can be a little bit of a challenge to raise the fry. So this is a fantastic fish. I highly recommend if you see them in a pet store or online, I would highly recommend, give them a try. They're a great color. They kind of look like little baby trout, only a lot easier to care for. If there are any challenges to keeping this fish, it's just about the tank mates, making sure that they are small and non-aggressive Again, if you want more information on tank mates, check out the description below. If you're looking for these fish, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. Appreciate you being here, and we will see you in the next one.